All right, so the software we're gonna demo today is this here. It's Storybook Weaver Deluxe. It's an old Windows 3.1 app. A friend recommended it to me. I've never used it before. I don't know anything about it. So I'm just gonna launch it and see what we got. And again, this really should run under Windows 3.1, but I cannot get my sound working under Windows 3.1. So, and again, sorry for the gamer headphones. <laughs> Oh, I love this stack up of all these bevels. Now I'm going to assert the fact that it said minimal installation 1 meg, maximum installation 65 megs means that just like the other app I did, uh, Paint, Write, and Play, uh, this is probably going to be loaded with sound effects. Those are probably all WAV files it's copying to the hard drive right now. Yeah, we can see there's a bunch of WAV files. Uh, there's some MIDI files in there. And then, yeah, mostly WAVs. All right, so here we go. This is an incredibly funky jam. All right, that's it. All right, so we've got story starters, which I guess is probably prompts. Um, this is for writing. This is for looking at what you've already written, uh, getting started, instructions. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Maybe this is literally a reading mode. Uh, let's try a story starter. How to use. All right, here we go. So what can we do here? Border objects, change or create objects, change object colors, object. Okay, let's flip through the pages. Now this is a really complicated scene. There's a lot going on here. And I'm guessing that every one of these is an individual object. So let's try moving this kitty. Yep, there we go. And we can do the Lord's work. There we go. That's a good kitty. So we can see there's a lot of points of articulation on this particular Gundam. Uh, so we can flip this dude around. Yep, he's not paying attention. In fact, he's he's heading for the door. Yeah, he's also very small. Uh, let's see, the pig is separate, the clock is separate, the shelves are part of the background. Okay, and we can see there's a bunch of different backgrounds here. Let's put these folks in a different environment. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, that's interesting. It didn't change the floor. Oh, I see. There's a horizon, and then there's a floor. So we can pick uh, vastly mismatched ones. Here we go. This is the stadium graveyard. That's where our story is going to play out. Okay, but honestly, these are some pretty cool environments. They put a lot of effort into these. And they're not rendered. I mean, these are all hand-painted. So someone spent a lot of time in you know, an Amiga-style bitmap editor to make these. Ah uh, yes, here we go. The escalator on Mars. In fact, the space escalator. Good. All right, enough fucking around. So what can we do here? Just like paint, write, and play, you can change the size of the text area. So again, this is for making picture books, so it's oriented around that. Unlike paint, write, and play, you can't move the text field up and down, which is probably just as well. That was sort of a weird feature. Um, if we go to change or create objects. Oh, that's cool. We can uh, actually create completely arbitrary objects. But I'm going to say that as much as this looks like a tool you could use to make anything you want, I mean, you've got the huge palette here and you've got the shrink and grow tools and selection tool and whatnot. I'm going to say it would be very hard to make anything in this really because all you have is a pencil, nothing else. I mean, you've got a paint bucket, but that's only, uh, that only goes so far. And to add insult to injury, even if you want to do pixel art in this manually, zooming in doesn't really work for that. Check this out. It only zooms in this fixed value, and it's tremendous. Look how big these pixels are. I mean, I guess you could do it, but that's a huge pain. So this is not good. This is actually really bad. So let's see, can we edit this person? 
Yes, okay. I'm going to say that I really doubt that the developers of the software actually made the sprites in the software. I think they made them in an external program then imported them. They're, they're too good. So I think that's a little disingenuous that they would give kids this piece of software that purports to have an editing facility, but really gives them no tools to work with. That's kind of cruel. All right, well, let's see what we have already. It looks like there's a lot of characters in here. Got football players, got everybody for sports, of course. Martial artists, more athletes, more athletes, more athletes. You know, it's just all people doing active things. There's no, like, computer nerds in here. Oh, I'm in the athletes section. Oh, gosh, look at this. There's so many categories. Oh, good. Skellingtons. Oh, we got the share zone. This skeleton is completely raising the roof. Let's go ahead. All right, so all this is pretty obvious. Um, I do see there's a change object colors. Let's see if that works. Okay, and that performs a tint operation. Yeah, that's kind of a cute gradient map feature. Eh, that's kind of neat. Okay, let's see what we have in terms of vehicles. Fantasy. A clown car. That's not really much of a fantasy. I mean, those are real. Uh, we've got fences, got all kinds of decorations. Gosh, there's so much. Wow, these are terrifying. All right, this guy's here now. Nothing you can do about it. He lives at the foot of the bed. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. You know, it does what it looks like it does. Uh, lets you make a multi-page book. You know, nothing really involved. Uh, you can set the font for a given part of the text here. Yeah, this edits text colors if you have text selected. Uh, under goodies, we've got options to move pages around, swap pages, go to pages, uh, things you'd expect. Let's see what the text of speech is like. I showed him how to put objects on the page. Click the button with the rubber stamp on it. Oh, God. We used Oof. the color button. Oh, okay. All right. That was, um, that went on forever. So again, much like Paint, Write, and Play, I don't think that that text speech engine came with Windows. I think that came with the game, and maybe that's why it's so bad, because they got the cheapest one they could. That was insufferable, and you can't stop it once it started. It just keeps going. Sounds like Doom music. You know, it sounds like one of the soundtracks from the Hell levels. Uh, okay, so you can add sound effects on objects. Hello. 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 Storybook Weaver is so cool, you can even record your own voice with the microphone button. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Alright, that's kind of cute. You can narrate your own story. I wonder how long it lets you record for. Go. Okay, it looks like it maxes out at 30 seconds, but that's long enough for one storybook page. So conceivably, you could narrate an entire book that way. I like how there's an attenuate button, because, you know, kids can understand that. Yeah, I'm going to say this is not something that would have been within the capabilities of, of most kids. I mean, f let's look at this guy here. Yeah, that's a bunch of different colors. That would have been so tedious. Not to mention, uh, you would have had to redraw the whole line of his mouth. That would have sucked. No one would have done that. That really bums me out, you know, it's this sort of a thing that would happen back in the day is they'd make these sort of disingenuous statements. They'd say, oh, the software has full editing capability, but really it had some super, super restricted capability, and so you could technically edit stuff, but you didn't get any of the tools the developers used, so, of course, it was incredibly tedious, and nobody did it. <laughs> Look at this sassy kitty. Oh, that's cool. You can paste in uh, full-color images. Uh... I have the feeling if I was in true color that this wouldn't look any better. It's probably a 256 color only app considering it was made for Windows 3.1. Oh, look at all the bugs. Look at all the good boys. All sorts of dogs. More dogs. Uh, those are dogs too. Oh, that's a good dog. Couple of dogs here. Let's make the dogs the focus of this scene. There we go. Fairy tale stories, adventure stories, any kind of, oh god, <laughs> there's so much going on here, gosh, look at all the things going on here, alright, let's make it really gay, there we go, it's very gay now, oh, and that's it, that's the end of the, end of the story.
I can't show you what the print output would look like, unfortunately, because I still don't have a printer for this machine. And there's no print preview in programs this old, so what can you do? Uh, it does look like there's a bunch of options for how to lay it out on printed sheets, which is pretty cool, especially this one here that lets you spread it across four pages. Uh, that's presumably for, you know, pinning up at class or whatever. That's pretty cool. This is curious too. Block out the desktop at startup. Let's see what that does. Oh, there you go. It does just what it says it does. It blocks out the desktop. I guess it keeps kids from getting distracted, but there's nothing really stopping them from just exiting. There was no option in there to prevent that, so that's kind of weird. But uh, I guess I get it. So let's read a story. Yeah, okay, it's the same one, it's just read-only. So again, I don't really understand the value of this because there's nothing stopping the kid from just exiting and going back and loading it to edit. Also, uh, Paint, Write, and Play is also made by the Learning Company, so this is kind of a sequel to that, I think. Or maybe the other one's a sequel to this, I don't know which. The final thing I'm curious about is, let's listen to the sound library. What do we have for music? Oh, there's so much. There's so many songs. I don't have time for all of these. Oh, that's interesting. It's actually PCM audio. Uh, not just a MIDI. That's a MIDI. Okay. See, again, this is a pretty good jam. Wow, a lot of those songs were really good. All right, and the one other feature here that's interesting is the ability to save as an HTML document. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, yeah, it's dumping everything to JPEGs. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so it saved it into a hard-coded path within the program folder. Cool. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. Uh, I guess we start at title. All right, and it's about what you'd expect. So there's the title, uh, just straight links to go to the next page, byline. Oh no, it baked the text into the JPEG. It's not even a high quality JPEG. God, that looks like shit. Let's see, I wonder if the MIDI files work. Nope, they don't seem to. God, that's weird embedded MIDI worked at the time. I'm kind of surprised they didn't do that. Oh, the JPEG just choked to death on all that detail. Oh, it's just completely wrecked. What a disaster. All right, so, um, I'm not sure I would call that a good program. I think that Paint, Write, and Play was a lot better. Uh, it had a lot more character to it, a lot more charm. Uh, the editing capabilities were much better. The art tools were much better. I think that as a child, if I'd been handed both of those, I wouldn't have given this one a second thought. And Paint, Write, and Play, I probably would have been in every single day. So yeah, if I had to give this a score, 4 out of 10. You can't really do that much in it. There aren't very many impressive features. It doesn't have any sort of entertainment value. I found it pretty damn joyless. But the only thing I can say for it is that it had an enormous cache of built-in images and sounds and music. And that's okay, but I don't think it compares to how much charm the other program had. Wow, this was put out in 1998. This has to be newer than Paint, Write, and Play. Ugh. Yeah, um, this is actually newer than Paint, Write, and Play, which is impressive. I mean, I can see them trying to find their way and making that before they made this, but the other way around, I mean, I don't know. They really took a step backwards. Well, anyway, uh, that was kind of a bust, but thanks for joining me. Hello, 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 hello.